When you see someone in your dreams, boom, caught it. You thought I wasn't going to make it. There's a 90% chance they're missing you. These are the TikToks that you tagged me in over the past however long it's been since I made one of these. Welcome to Lion Mental Health. My name is Jesse Lyon. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, certified trauma hypnotherapist. But what you're here for is dream interpretations, and that is my full-time job. And so we're going to react to some TikToks about dreams and see whether they're true, they're fake, and get you the real details about what your mind is telling you while you sleep. All right, here's the first one by I'm Mr. Sunday. Psychology facts, which usually means it's fake. When you see someone in your dreams, Hate when they make you wait a whole 15 seconds for like a split second at the end. Boom. Caught it. You thought I wasn't going to make it. There's a 90% chance they're missing you. This one is what blew up my channel. I'm going to be honest. Like this, this dream interpretation is what made me famous because there's one video that went viral. It's the first super, super viral, 11 million views that I ever got. And it was like, if you're dreaming of them, it means they're thinking about you. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Right. Like if I have a dream about Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift ain't thinking nothing about me. Right. If I think about uh, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise ain't, that doesn't know who I am. Right. So like what what are you talking about? And 90 percent chance, like how would you even verify that? So biggest load of crap. But here's what you can learn from this. Dreams are inherently selfish, but in a positive way. When you are dreaming about something, your mind is processing inside of your brain. And so when you're thinking about someone, it means that there's something about you related to that someone that you need to be working through. Unfinished baggage, issues from the past, whatever. So if you're thinking about that ex, if you're thinking about a loved one who's passed away, it means that there's something inside of you that you need to answer that question. Why did you break up? Why are they not here anymore? What problem are you facing now that they might give you good advice on and help you overcome? That's what it's about. It's about you not really about them. And this is where the astral projection witch community kind of gets it wrong. Like spiritual community can be way too much about other people. And like, you know, people can play inside of your dreams and like put a hex on you or something. That's just like clinically not true. That's not what we've seen at all. You can be influenced and your dreams can be influenced, but they're about you. Your mind's processing. So enough rambling about that. Next dream. Okay. Somebody please explain to me what is going on and then I'm not going crazy okay hey I don't know if you know me in real life don't make fun of me for this no no I judgment have a daughter who turned six months three days ago okay, okay. um she you. has an R name my son turned nine months old about four months Five days ago, ago I had a very very vivid dream that she didn't exist Okay. And then instead of having her, my fiance and I decided that we were going to foster. And after months and months and months of not getting a call for a foster placement, we finally got a call. And it was for a baby girl. And her name was a very n uncommon R name as well. And in the dream, she was like the same age as my daughter same size she looked exactly the same and in this dream she eventually had to go back to her parents like re reunification whatever okay okay i would think that's and about you i remember asking the social worker in my dream like you know this is going somewhere why can't we keep her this isn't fair i've raised her she's like a daughter to me usually this is like and your I internal child the social worker in my dream i'm like she would get get along so well with my daughter and the social worker looks me in the eye okay. and goes, don't you talk about my daughter here. She does not exist. Mm. And then I woke up. So I'm like, okay. I will pause there for a minute. There is a pretty interesting phenomenon when you're lucid dreaming and you recognize that it's a dream and things don't make sense and things don't line up. If you confront the dream about that, your brain doesn't know how to handle that. It's like, well, the dream is real. It's a real experience you're having and waking life is real. So don't like try and confront them because then you create conflict inside your mind and the dream turns kind of wonky. Some people like the monsters will turn against them and stuff. Other people like they just wake up because there's too much like cognitive dissonance. So that makes sense to me so far. It's like, don't confront the dream with something else. Like, well, that doesn't make sense. Dreams have their own logic. So don't do that. That's a little freaky, but whatever. Sure, whatever. This dream was so vivid that for the past four months since I've had it, I say probably once or twice a week to my fiance, I wonder how 
she's doing. Dreams really can be that real. Yeah. And I'm not saying the name because you'll, it'll make sense in a second. Okay. But it's I'm waiting. R name. So my daughter has an R name and this baby, this dream baby has an R name as well. That's very uncommon. Okay. So we go to the library today. That baby was there. She was there. Like I said to my fiance last night, I wonder how that baby is doing. And she was there. Whoa. It gets weirder. Okay. She's with her grandparents. Okay. And grandpa says, oh yeah, um, she just had her first birthday. I said, oh, that's really sweet. He goes, yeah, she had her first birthday three days ago. She is exactly six months older than my six month old daughter. She is exactly double her age. Oh, so it makes sense why the daughter wasn't alive at that point. Right? In the dream? When we were at the library, this little baby could not leave me alone. Wow. Like, she wanted nothing to do with her older sister who was there, nothing to do with grandma and grandpa. She was magnetic to me. Like, chills. So, wow. if anybody has an explanation on... Always. Always got one. What that was, was that, like a sign was that two timelines folding together was it me getting my wishes answered on making sure that she was okay was it a glitch in the matrix type thing like nah. somebody anybody please help because i'm well so i guess i'll let it finish okay, but also what okay so here's here's what's going on here's here's a couple things a couple things one, of course, if there's some spiritual kind of force taking place, I wouldn't be able to tell you about it. I'm a scientist. I'm a researcher. I, I can't tell you. I'm not a pastor, right? So if you believe that, I love that for you. That's great. But we're going to stick with psychology, okay? couple things at play here. Number one is uh, Carl Jung uh, believed very much in what's called the collective unconscious, right? <clears throat> Human beings, we all share our DNA. We all come from each other. We've grown. We've evolved. And so we do have this connection, human being to human being. Right. And so Carl Jung theorized <clears throat> this has never been proven, but he theorized that we're all connected. So if you want to go from a kind of pseudoscience like sort of background, you could say that maybe there is some kind of awareness, human being to human being about what's going on. And there's some anecdotal evidence to support that. Right. But here's what the current scientific research says. What the current scientific research says is that these things are coincidence and they can be explained by other stuff, which I know is not an exciting explanation but maybe you can tell me what you think in the comments down below uh, while you're there hit subscribe why don't you here's here's what science would say if this person saw a girl in their dreams and then saw a girl who looks very similar in that way in their waking life they would probably pay attention to them they would probably be looking at them well you ever had that experience of when somebody's looking at you you can kind of feel their eyes boring through the back of your head well, I'm sure that this individual who had the dream was looking at this girl like, oh my gosh, it looks exactly like this person that I saw in my dream was looking at it. Little girls love attention, right? And so they're like, oh my God, fixated and saw that attention, loved it, latched onto it. And so is playing with this dreamer uh, in the library. So they can kind of be explained in that way. Now, in another way, we also know that... Um, things like parasomnias right where like you have sleep disorders but also especially deja vu is kind of a misremembering dreams aren't very detailed they're very emotional and as we wake up our mind fills in the details of that emotional dream with different things that's why emotional intensity equals detail in dream the more emotionally intense the dream the more detailed the dream is going to be as well that's why people with bipolar, borderline disorder, they tend to have very vivid dreams because they have very vivid emotions. So there's a parallel there. It's not like literal detail. It's emotional detail that we fill in as we wake up. It's like uh, observational bias, right? You know, when you have an eyewitness report, those eyewitnesses fill in details that may not actually be there and may misremember. That is the current theory about deja vu. That's why it happens. And so if this person had a very emotionally intense dream, which they said they did, they might come up with details about a little girl that they might happen across in a public space, like a library. They stare at them, the girl likes that attention, they come up, and there's a coincidence about the birthday being, you know, close to their daughter's birthday. So that's not the fun expl explanation, but it's the realistic explanation. Like, if you believe in something else, I love that for you. But currently, 
that would be the explanation because we've never been able to duplicate these studies or find anything significant to support it in the research, at least according to the current knowledge. Now, I hope we find something because that would be freaking cool, right? But um, sorry, I guess I guess me reacting to TikToks is just poking holes in people's, you know, quasi existential astral projection theories. But hey, that's what I got. All right, let's do one more for the road before we wrap up this episode. Here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was a part with my family and friends that passed away. Okay. Oh, uh, are they saying like, if I'm the only one who gets a lot of deja vu feelings this year, I once had a dream that I was in the POV. Oh, here you go. But you know that sensation when you feel like you fell it's apparently a dead relative trying to make you, oh my gosh, <laughs> trying to take you with them. But okay, this is too much. This is too much. All right. So listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I guess they're insinuating that it's like, oh my gosh, they're actually going to pass away. No, death inside of dreams is one of the most misinterpreted. That and sex, I think, are probably the two most misinterpreted ones. But death inside of a dream I mean, it could be a premonition, right? Like if you are subconsciously aware that your relative is not doing well and so they die, well, okay, your mind is putting together things inside of your dream because it is sensing those in the waking life and saying, hey, here's a pretty probable prediction of what's going to happen next. You better be prepared for this loss in your life. That happens sometime, but it's a small portion of it. Death most commonly inside of dreams is an emotional symbol for change. You got to let go of the past and be reborn anew. And so that change is like, hey, your relationship with this loved one is changing. Either you're growing or they're growing and it's going to become different. Now, that could be literally because of them passing away. But again, that's very unlikely. More likely, some kind of change is happening. New job, new relationship. You know, you're going to become a parent or you're going to get into a new relationship and that's going to change how you relate to them. And so they're dying because the old way that you see them is dead and you got to make a new relationship with them because it's got to fit with the times. This is a case, great case in point of this is parents will often dream about their children dying not because they're actually going to die. And what a terrible suggestion to give a parent that their children is, their child is going to die. But because that child is dying and an older child is taking their place, you know, that infant passes away and here comes a toddler. That toddler passes away and here comes an elementary age child. That elementary age child passes away and here comes a middle schooler, right? So death and rebirth, death and rebirth. And that's the cycle of life. Our dreams know that and give us that symbol all the time. If you got crazy dreams, tag me in those comments. Tag me on TikTok. I'm going to start making these more often. I love responding to it. Uh, keep the interactions coming. I love you guys. Remember, your mind is not against you. It's just misunderstood. Let's figure out what those dreams mean. Bye.